So I recently just got this reference model 6700 XT for MSRP, which was really exciting. I've tested it out, even put it up against the ROG Strix RTX 3060, which has an insane cooler model. And you know, the cooler model on this reference card is, well, I mean, less robust. And we saw some temperatures that weren't really necessarily a cause for concern, but they're a bit higher than what you see on a lot of AIB coolers. But what can we do about that? So what I'd like to look at in this video is undervolting in order to control the temperatures. But since we're already going to be playing around in the Radeon control panel to undervolt, we might as well do some other performance tuning as well. I think we should look at overclocking it as well as tuning the memory. We'll also look at those separated. So we'll look at uh, what if we just undervolt it? What does that do? And then we'll also look at what if we undervolt it with tweaking the memory speeds? And then what if we also add in a full-on core overclock as well? And we'll look at some side-by-side -side comparisons. Now, it's going to be really important if you're following along at home to understand that not every GPU, even if you buy a reference model RX 6700 XT, there is no guarantees that you will be able to achieve stable overclocks or undervolts at the exact same numbers that I do. So you can't just go ahead and copy them. However, if you want my short version of an overclocking guide, generally you can kind of just Google what other people got on your GPU, and that's a starting point. It might give you an idea of, because, okay, the, the nice way to overclock, let's just go ahead and open up the dang program and I'll, I'll talk to you about it there, okay? So, boom. First of all, on AMD GPUs, you can just use their, their driver software. From the Home tab, you want to click on the, by the way, this is what it looks like on the current drivers as of filming, 22.3.2. If you are on a different driver version, things might look slightly different. But anyway, so if you click on the Performance tab, you then want to click on the Tuning tab. And under the Tuning tab, what it currently looks like is this. They've kind of put the CPU in here as well. I think it used to not have that, or I, I don't remember being there. But anyway, the point is, you want to change the tuning to manual. Now you could click that here, but then you're going to have to click it down here anyway. So on your GPU tuning, we want to go to manual tuning and we want to make it custom. Now in here, you've got a whole bunch of stuff. You'll notice I do have smart access memory enabled. And in general, I'm going to do that, but you might not be able to because you might not be on a compatible CPU or motherboard. And so that's a whole other topic. I've done videos on that. But anyway, I do have smart access memory enabled. You may or may not be able to. But we want to click all these little buttons. Are those called radio dials? I don't, I don't know. But the point is, click all the buttons. We want to do GPU tuning, and we want to have advanced control over it. That gives us the actual numbers. If you don't have the advanced control, it sets it more in terms of percentages. I'd rather know the actual numbers. Maybe you think differently. Um, and we'll also want control over the VRAM tuning, and we will also want, well, you might want control over the fan tuning. That's kind of up to you. And then power tuning as well. Now, power tuning, I'm going to recommend you slide this as far to the right as your GPU can do, because this doesn't mean your GPU will draw more power. It just means you are giving it permission to draw more power if that's going to help it improve its performance. And so I don't see any really downside, as far as I know, to just allowing your GPU to access more power if it wants to, okay? So I'm gonna slide that all the way to the right and I've never had any issues doing that. Now, not every model of even 6700 XT will have 15% limit. Different models could have different limits set by the AIB is my understanding. Now, Let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, we want to just look into an undervolt. Now, how do you undervolt? Like I said, the first thing I actually recommend doing is just seeing what other people were able to achieve stably and using that as a starting point. Because if you're going to do it yourself carefully, you should honestly pull it down like 10 meg millivolt. I think it's millivolts. And then you should run a test of some kind. You, you would apply changes so it actually kicks in. 
And then you would run a game, play around in a game for a bit, run some kind of intense benchmark application. This even has a built-in stress tester. And you'd want to see if it's stable. And then you go down another maybe like 10. But here's the thing. If you just Google what other people got stable, I mean, you're watching my video right now. But if you're on a different GPU and you're interested in doing this, just Google what somebody else did and where they were stable and start there. And if you're not stable, then go back up, give it more power again. If you are stable where they were able to push it, you could try going further. So you could go down to like 1090 if they were stable at 1100. Now, honestly, I'll admit right now and give a shout out, I Googled what other people got on their 6700 XT to get a baseline starting point. I pulled up a video from Ancient Gameplays. Uh, I think a couple of his other ones have popped up on my channel. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not on my channel, but I'm on YouTube recommendations before. It seems like he has a lot of good AMD benchmark, uh, not benchmark, well, maybe benchmarking, but um, looks like overclocking and undervolting content. So that'd be a good place to look if you're on a uh, looking to do that on a Radeon GPU. It's like a hair in my eye or something, guys. Anyway, he was stable at 1100. I tried it out. Um, I was stable. I went a little bit further and it seemed stable. But then when I switched to Red Dead Redemption 2, it was not able to complete the benchmark uh, when I went much lower than this. So I went back to 1100. It seemed stable at like 1070. Um, but then, like I said, it, so sometimes it's stable in one game, but not another. Which, just as a side note, you can actually set different overclocks on a per game basis within this driver utility. So if you find you're stable in one game but not another, but hey, it's stable in that game at more aggressive settings, you could go ahead and change this from global tuning, um, and you could go into a per game basis and do it that way. So that's up to you. Anyway. I'm going to leave it at 1100. So when you see my results where it's just the undervolt, that's it. That's all I did. I just went to 1100 and there we go. Okay, but what if we want to also increase performance? What can we do? Well, one of the easiest things to do is on the VRAM tuning, just increase the memory timings. So it has default, it has fast timings. That's all you've got here. By going to the fast timings, in a lot of games, you are going to get better performance just with the fast timings. But then you can also bump up the frequency. And once again, we have the advanced control where you can set it as an exact number rather than as a percentage. Now, once again, credit where it's due. Um, I did try out these settings that uh, were recommended over at Ancient Gameplays, and they seemed good. He had a good point, which is if you set it a little bit higher, there's, there's kind of an offset in between where it actually sits and the number you type in here. It seems to sometimes go a little bit below what you set. So by jumping, if you want it to be 2100, you actually type in something a bit bigger than 2100, and then it will actually be 2100. Now, I played around with this a bit, and I didn't notice much benefit, if any, by going past this on my particular model. And that's actually something I've noticed on overclocking other GPUs. I've had GPUs in the past where it seemed stable, pushing the memory, crazy far. I think this happened on my RTX 2070. And I could push the memory crazy far, but then when I actually ran benchmarks, they started getting slower. So I don't know exactly why that happens. I'm really, this is not an overclocking focused channel. I've never claimed to be an overclocking expert. Um, but I, I think you can be, you want to be careful just because it's not crashing doesn't mean you're actually increasing performance. So I'd recommend when you make some changes that you actually run some benchmarks and compare the numbers and make sure that your results are actually getting better, not just that you're stable. So when you look at my memory and undervolt, this is what I set it to, okay? Now, when we uh, also want to overclock the core, it looks like this card defaulted to a max frequency target of 2659, which is already pretty dang high. But I decided to try targeting 2800, and then I have heard, and I haven't actually done enough A-B testing myself to know if this is true, that setting the minimum frequency close to your max frequency can help the stability of the overclock, maybe because your GPU is not swinging between such a wide range. I don't know, to be honest. I've just heard that. So maybe I'm just spreading useless misinformation, but I'm at least tagging it as that's what I've heard, guys. <laughs> anyway, so when you look at my overclocked results, 
these were my settings. So it was targeting 2800 and trying not to fall below 2700. And I did have the undervolt, which is gonna help rein in the temperatures, despite the fact that pushing the overclock here and upping the power tuning could increase temperatures. Hopefully this kind of offsets those increases. And I went ahead and left the fan speeds as they are by default. But if you're finding it too loud or you wish it would actually go more aggressive, maybe you're wearing some closed back headphones and you don't really care if your PC sounds like a jet engine, you can get in here and just bump up the fan speed. There's also advanced controls where you can set a fan curve. So what you're basically doing here is I could, I could pull these dots, right? And I can change them to where um, we've got zero RPM. So this is the temperature at which it would go above that, right? So it's got like that, it's got 50%. So basically, I could increase the fan speed percentage at this temperature. That's, that's basically what those are controlling. So at what temperature do I want what fan speed? So I could get a lot more aggressive. I could basically say, I want it to stay quiet, but as soon as it gets over a certain thing, I just want it to like ramp up. And these are, can be some kind of personal preference things and you could look into more information on setting custom fan curves as you want. What I went ahead and did on, the, on that was actually, I just, I just left it at the default. So that's what you'll see in the testing. Now, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and see some side-by-side -side comparisons of all of these. And I'm doing it towards, well, you know what, let's just run the comparisons and, and I'll tell you there. All right, let's run some benchmarks and we put them side-by-side. -side. And as usual, don't mind if you hear my kids playing, jumping around upstairs while I try to record this voiceover <laughs> while their grandma's over to play. Anyway, so what we're looking at here is first, just with the undervolt. Now this is the 1100 millivolt setting. And other than that, everything is set exactly the same. The game is running the 1440p max preset and all of that. Now, I think it, it's worthwhile to let this play out for a while to see if as the benchmark runs longer, the temps stay down on the undervolt. So far, it's really looking good. And notice that not only is it currently 10 degrees cooler, look at the wattage. It's actually drawing less power. This is actually saving you money on your electric bill. Maybe not a mind-blowing amount, but honestly, considering this is the same GPU and basically delivering identical performance, by the way, I didn't change the fan speeds or anything. So this is running at the same fan speed. So we're drawing less power. It's running much cooler. So the fans might be running at a lower speed. I didn't really notice a huge amount of fan noise either way. Again, I game with headphones on. I know not everybody does. They're open back headphones, but anyway. The point is though, that this is honestly really impressive. We're um, making a massive, massive improvement to the GPU overall. So I think that it's completely stable as far as I can tell as well, which is the main concern you'd have with an undervolt is that it's stable and that you're also able to have your GPU boosting and performing as usual. We're about to see the uh, the end results here as he drives across the bridge. But overall, just watching the side by side, I haven't seen any downside at all to this undervolt. Performance is basically identical. The GPU is much cooler and literally saving you money, drawing less power. Don't mind that little minimum thing there because this game's really picky on the minimums. We didn't really see any dips in our frame time graph or anything like that, but now, Let's take a look at running this with a memory overclock. So we've got a plus 112 on our memory speeds and we've set it to the fast timings instead of the default timings. Now I don't think we need to run through the entire benchmark here, but it's looking like our frame rate has jumped one or two FPS. It's nothing mind blowing. But what's cool here is notice that the GPU is cool. Hi, it was actually not an intentional pun there, but hey, look at me go. But what I'm getting at here is increasing the memory is not really dramatically increasing our power usage or the temperatures, at least on the GPU itself. I don't have anything set up to monitor the uh, temps on the VRAM itself, but you know, the performance went up a little bit. But what if we full on overclock this thing along with the undervolt? Now, this is gonna be a personal preference thing. I'm gonna be honest, guys, look at the power draw. Now, instead of drawing less power, 
we are drawing more power. So I don't know whether it obeys the undervolt or not. It is actually running a little bit cooler. So I think it is utilizing the undervolt. So even with the um, clock speeds pushed all the way up to 2800, and you know I'm still running all the memory stuff, we bumped the power limit up and all of that. So this is increasing performance. It's staying a bit cooler. This is faster and cooler, but it is drawing a little bit more power. So that's gonna be the big downside here. And while it's cooler than the stock settings, this is not as cool as the, um, just the undervolt settings or the undervolt plus the memory overclocking. So I don't know guys, I think for me personally, unless I was just struggling to run a game and I absolutely needed every last FPS, I probably would not actually do this overclock. I, I'm a big fan of undervolting and I liked the memory timings and I liked the memory speed increase. So I think out of all the options that we're seeing here, I'd choose option number two. <laughs> I, I would choose the undervolt and just bump up the memory. You got a tiny performance increase and the GPU is still staying really cool. Didn't seem like any downsides whatsoever here. Now, if you're just chasing the maximum performance, this is good. And with that undervolt, we, like I said, this is cooler than the stock settings. It's just not anywhere near as cool as we were, you know, at the, uh, at just with the undervolt without the OC. Let's see the overall results here. I think we've got a few extra FPS and I hope that all of you have an excellent day.